We are live in three, two, one. We've laid some foundational work that the next mayor can build on. Mayor Biscoopsy will not run for re-election in 2020. And I'm serious, there's a heart attack about it. Police crack down on drunk drivers this St. Patty's Day holiday. The suspected gunman of the Dutch tram shooting is now behind bars. Welcome to Newsline, I'm Amy Hamilton and it's March 19th, 2019. And I'm Marin Klein. Days after the New Zealand massacre, police in the Dutch city of Utrecht arrest their own suspect. Police have a suspect in custody and are investigating a possible, quote, terrorist motive for the deaths. O Omar Jimenez is in Washington to explain how the United States is taking note of the security concerns around the world. Fear inside a Dutch tram as a gunman opens fire. Police arrested a 37-year-old man, Gekman Tanish, for the deadly attack. One of the scenarios is that it's uh, terrorism, uh, but we're not sure. The shooting in the Netherlands happening just three days after the deadliest terror attack in New Zealand's history. Investigators there say 28-year-old Brenton Harrison Tarrant, an Australian, targeted two mosques in Christchurch. Fifty people lost their lives. Just before the attack, investigators believe the gunman posted a link to a white nationalist manifesto. The 87-page document is filled with anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim sentiments. There are those who do not share our values of openness, of diversity, of compassion. As New Zealand now works to change its gun laws, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen sees domestic terrorism as a, quote, real and serious danger. I want to make one thing very clear. We will not permit such hate in the homeland. The secretary says she sees a range of threats. I am concerned about them holding our infrastructure hostage, stealing our money and secrets, exploiting children online, and even hacking our very democracy. In Washington, I'm Omar Jimenez reporting. A man is in the hospital recovering after he was shot this morning during a SWAT team standoff. The police arrived after someone called reporting that 53-year-old Paul, Paul Harward was shooting toward their home in Sampin County. Police tried to coax him out of his home, but he refused to cooperate. Officials then called the Utah County Metro SWAT team for backup. When the SWAT team arrived, Harward ran out of the house and fired at the police. Police barricaded and shot Harward. Officials are investigating the incident. A man in West Valley City is dead after a fatal accident while on the job. The adult man worked for Warner Trucking in West Valley City, located at 2300 South, 5400 West. The man was unloading material from a truck when he fell and the materials pinned him. West Valley City Police are investigating and OSHA will also conduct an investigation. Police have not yet released the name of the man. Former NFL football player Anthony McClanahan is behind bars after he pleaded guilty to murdering his wife. Anthony McClanahan's guilty plea was part of a plea bargain. Prosecutors agreed to remove a domestic violence design designation and an enhanced penalty for the use of dangerous weapons. Prosecutors also agreed to drop a child kidnapping case against him in 30 days after his sentencing. In 2017, McClanahan claimed his wife had been attacked by two men. Police found the body of his wife, K.C. McClanahan, in the couple's condo. She and Anthony had cuts on their faces. Her cuts were consistent with a blade attached to a bracelet she had owned. Anthony McClanahan faces 15 years to life in prison, and he is scheduled for sentencing on April 29th. A 16-year-old boy is dead after his brother accidentally shot and killed him. Yesterday, emergency crews responded to a report of the shooting around 8 a.m. at 507 West, 5400 South in Kearns. According to Unified Police, the two brothers were playing with a shotgun when it went off and killed the boy. The teen's identity has yet to be released, and police are not sure who owned the gun. The 17-year-old brother who triggered the shotgun is cooperating with police. This is the second fatal accidental shooting in Salt Lake County this year. In light of yesterday's accidental shooting, gun owners are speaking out about the importance of gun safety. Newsline reporter Melissa La Rocha spoke with one gun owner who says safety is important, but it is especially important for those with children at home. The Unified Police Department is urging people to double check the security of the weapons in their home after the accidental death of a 16-year-old boy in Kearns yesterday. According to the gunviolencearchive.org, there have been more than 1,000 incidents of gun violence in Utah since 2014, with 97 of those being unintentional shootings. Gun owner Anthony Holtz says it is important for kids to get gun safety training. 
So from a really young age, my dad and my uncles were always teaching me gun safety, basic things like, you know, never point a gun at anyone, whether it's loaded or not. In regards to gun safety, Sergeant Nisha King of the Provo City Police Department says one way to learn how to handle a gun safely is to educate yourself by taking a concealed carry permit class. And if you've never shot a gun before, don't just shoot it based off of what you learned on the internet. You know, call around, find a course. There's a lot of gun shops that can give you resources. There's a lot of just general people, if you ask around, that know how to shoot. But make sure you go out with someone that knows what they're doing. Whether you are a first-time gun owner looking for training or a parent wanting to teach your child about gun safety, there are many resources available online. Gunsafetyrules.nra.org says the top three things to keep in mind are to always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, to always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, and to always keep the gun unloaded until it's ready to use. For parents looking for guidance on how to talk to your child about gun safety, projectchildsafe.org has guidelines and tips. Um, there's nothing that's more unsafe than having someone who carries a gun that doesn't know how to use it and doesn't know how to safely carry it. Reporting for Newsline, I'm Melissa LaRocha. Parents can also look at the website projectchildsafe.org for guidelines on how to talk to your kids about gun safety and can request a free Project Child Safe safety kit. Roy City Police share a, a Facebook post of a man whose selfie caught him in the act. A man near Valley View Elementary fled after he was pulled over for speeding, but he was caught by the officer's body camera just before he sped off. The Roy City Police say that evading is a felony and we would like to talk to him about it on their Facebook page. The selfie subject drives a tan Toyota 4Runner with dealer license plates. Police ask if you know this man or his vehicle to contact the Roy City Police Department. Mayor Jackie Biscupsi pulled out of the 2019 mayoral race. For this reason, I have come to the difficult decision to withdraw from the 2019 Salt Lake City mayor's race. The decision to pull out of the race comes just one month after her announcement to run for re-election. In a press conference yesterday, Biscupsi explains a serious and complex family situation. She did not explain her situation fully, but said it involved her children. As this is a private issue involving our children, that is all I want to say on the matter, and I appreciate your respect. By opting out of the re-election bid, she will become the first single-term mayor of Salt Lake in 47 years. The mayor leaves behind her re-election vows of affordable housing, improved air quality, and expanded transit. She still looks forward to her remaining nine months. Utah Highway Patrol says St. Patrick's Day is a holiday where more people tend to drink and drive. To combat drinking and driving, UHP held a DUI blitz this weekend. Newsline reporter Natalia Pennington is live in Provo. Natalia, how many DUI arrests were there last weekend? Highway Patrol officers say they made 42 DUI arrests this past holiday weekend. This year, UHP added more shifts to target those tipsy drivers. It's no surprise for police officers when drivers drink and drive on St. Patrick's weekend. We know that through experience that uh, there tend to be a higher number of impaired drivers out during those times. You know why you were stopped, Stevie? No. This year, 75 evening shifts were added statewide to target impaired drivers. Surgeon Spencer Cannon says that even if St. Patrick's Day would have fallen in the middle of the week, they would still have many DUI arrests. I hate to characterize it as a successful effort, but we were successful in finding impaired drivers and getting some of them off the road. Thanks to that effort, 42 DUI arrests were made during the weekend across the state, with Salt Lake City being the highest. Luckily, only one person was injured and taken to the hospital. But officers say to not rely on luck when it comes to getting DUI arrests, as they can cost $10,000 and more on court costs, fines, fees, and treatment costs. Utah's new law lowered the threshold for a DUI from 0.8% of alcohol in your blood to 0.5%, hoping that this will reduce the number of arrests. Sergeant Cannon takes this seriously and says that this is 100% preventable. This includes getting a ride from him. Uh, and I'm serious. There's a heart attack about it. If somebody, if somebody called, uh, for whether I'm on duty or off duty, I would either pick, come pick them up myself if I could or I'd uh, make arrangements for them to get a ride.
Compared to 2017 DUI arrest, Utah decreased by 80 arrests across the state. However, the number has increased by 26 more DUI arrests from last year to this year. Reporting live in Provo, I'm Natalia Pennington. Thanks, Natalia. The national supermarket chain Shopco will close its remaining 120 stores this summer. According to documents filed in federal bankruptcy court, Shopco has filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and all remaining locations will be closed by June. There were 19 Shopco locations in Utah and those stores will be closing in stages over the next several months. Seven of those Utah stores have already closed, six will close in April and six more will close in, in May. Salt Lake City Airport hits another major milestone today. One of the last steel beams will be placed on top of the North Concourse this afternoon. Remarks will be made starting at 1230, followed by the official signing of the steel beam and lunch with the workers. Speakers include Salt Lake City Department of Airport's Executive Director Bill Wyatt, Salt Lake City Chiefs staff Patrick Leary and Salt Lake County, and Salt Lake City Council members. The expansion is set to be finished in 2020. Utah ranks as the eighth most innovative state. That's according to findings done by WalletHub. The personal finance website compared the 50 states and Washington, D.C. across 24 key indicators of innovation. Massachusetts ranked number one, while Mississippi was ranked last. The data rankings ranges from the amount of STEM professionals to tech company density. Utah also ranked number five in the best eighth grade math and science performance. The prophet of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is turning 95 and is inviting everyone to celebrate with him. The celebration will be an opportunity for members of the church to see the prophet as a father, patriarch, servant, and friend. Performers and distinguished guests will provide musical numbers, personal tributes, and insights into the life of the church's prophet. The event will be held at 7 p.m. on Friday, September 6th at the Salt Lake Conference Center. Free tickets will be available July 30th at 10 a.m. at thechurchofjesuschrist.org. Coming up, a huge inferno at a Texas chemical plant. We'll tell you how long the fire is expected to last. In it like this, is, it's always crazy. Melting snow causes massive flooding in Nebraska. We'll show you how flood victims are reacting. Hi. 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 We'll show you Toy Story's newest friend with a sneak peek to the upcoming movie. With temperatures, but with rain showers this week. Find out more in our five-day forecast. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. They call me Maxi, but I prefer tripod. I was your above average four-legged homie and then wham, bam, minivan. Some people pity me. Now that's lame. I still run, fetch, and swim. And the ladies love me. I'm the ultimate wingman. Just don't ask me to high five. A cyclone in Mozambique, Africa, may have killed more than 1,000 people. In a national radio address after yesterday's disaster, the president of Mozambique, Philippe Nuzi, claimed that 1,000 may be dead and 100,000 may be in immediate danger from shattered infrastructure and building damage. The cyclone has caused massive damages in Bira, a coastal city in central Mozambique, and has been cut off from the rest of the country. The Red Cross and the Red Crescent are on scene hoping to re help relieve some of the damage. With less than 500 days until the Tokyo Olympics gets underway, the president of the Japanese Olympic Committee has announced he will step down from his position in June. 
The 71-year-old ex-president of the Tokyo 2020 bidding committee was placed under a formal investigation last December by French prosecutors over corruption allegations relating to the 2020 bidding process. The French prosecutors are investigating two payments made by the Tokyo 2020 Olympic bid committee to a Singapore-based company. Japanese authorities deny knowledge of any illicit payment and Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihide Suga said they would abide by any investigation by French authorities. A massive inferno at a Texas chemical plant has environmental officials monitoring air quality in the Houston area. The blaze is burning through giant storage tanks of fuel and other highly flammable substances at the Intercontinental Terminals Company facility. It has cast a massive, dark, ominous cloud that is now looming over the city of Houston. Officials expect it could take days to put it out. According to the air quality, all detections recorded by CTAH were below levels that would represent a health concern. The company is trying to empty a tank holding a highly flammable liquid called NAFTA. They say the blaze is contained, but only for the time being, as the fire continues to rage on, burning through fuel tank by tank. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Record-breaking floods in Nebraska are producing islands in the landlocked state. Governor Pete Ricketts says this could be the worst flooding Nebraska has ever seen, but residents are working together. More than 130 emergency declarations have been made for the state's cities and counties. The Nebraska Emergency Management Agency says this flood has already cost the state more than $205 million. Seeing it like this, is, it's always crazy. There is also major flooding in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where some residents have already started to get rid of damaged goods. Other states affected include Iowa, Missouri, and South Dakota. The flooding in the Midwest is being blamed for at least four deaths. People in Utah County may be better prepared to deal with an emergency or disaster after learning some valuable skills at the 7th Annual Emergency Preparedness Expo. News Line reporter Larissa Vecchi joins us now. Larissa, what information was available at the expo? The exposition was full of innovative methods of staying safe amidst unexpected events. Do you know what to do in case of a fire? Flooding? How about making sure your water is drinkable? Companies such as the Home Depot, Costco, Macy's, and others were present at the annual emergency preparedness expo for Utah County in Cedar Hills. Booths were set up with demonstrations of how to deal with emergencies. Teresa Brunt was at the exposition teaching residents the best way to stop a person from bleeding out. This is placed on snugly and then you're looking at your wound and then you're twist, twisting this windless rod. You put that lock that in place, you look at your wound, did it stop the bleeding? If it didn't, then you take it out and you turn it one more time and tighten it into that little bracket there, just like that. And then put this on here and then the important piece of um, timing it. We started uh, with the, the Boston bombings and Sandy Hook, realizing that we were losing lives because people were bleeding. Products such as water bottles with filters, aloe vera skin protection, emergency kits, robots, and so much more were displayed. The other thing I feel like is very important is power. And we have many different packs that you can keep in your vehicle that will both jumpstart your vehicle as well as charge your portable electronics with a USB. Sergeant Peter Quitner was at the event. Emergency management is a big topic. It's a big deal. Uh, preparedness is a big deal. We take it seriously. And so there's, you see all the participation here. It's just people that want more information about how to be prepared. People flooded the venue at Cedar Hills for what turned out as an insightful learning experience on preparing for safety in the case of an emergency. Reporting for Newsline, I'm Larissa Vecchi. One of Disney's most popular stories is back with a new movie this summer. Disney and Pixar's Toy Story 4 trailer was released earlier today and is already making quite the buzz all over social media. Savannah Hegerhorst is here to tell us all about it. Savannah? That's right, Amy. The toys are back in town. Let's take a look at that trailer. The trailer shows Woody and the gang living their best life with new and adorable owner Bonnie. Bonnie's craft project, Forky, emerges but doesn't know if he really wants to be a toy. I am not a toy. I was made for soup, salad, maybe chili, and then the trash. Forky bails during a road trip and forces Woody to go after him. On the way, Woody finds new friends, new evils like the creepy gang of ventriloquist dolls, and possibly a new purpose. And Toy meets Girl again as Woody runs into his old flame, Little Bo Peep, who seems to help him along the way. 
As you can see from this trailer, toys will be toys, but there are a lot of mixed reviews about the fourth edition. This user says, in a bubble it looks fine, but when you compare it to two, which already has Woody questioning where he belongs, it kind of seems redundant. But this person does not agree. People say it's going to be bad, but we all know it's not. It's Pixar. It's going to be the best animated movie of the year. This person refers, tr prefers a totally new lineup of toys. He says, I think it would have been fine as Toy Story 3 if we hadn't already had a top-notch end to the trilogy. The Bo Peep villain twist seems kind of obvious, but the Island of Lost Toys ideas is interesting. And finally, this person said, I miss Zerg. Regardless of your opinion about the trailer, Toy Story 4 premieres this summer on June 21st, and I will definitely be seeing it. If you want a satellite view of how bad the, the Nebraska flooding is, take a look at these pictures. More than 8 million people are under flood war warnings, in part because of the rapid melting of ice and snow. Flood records have been shattered and more rain is expected this week. We are seeing some more rain come into Utah too this week too, but however, we're going to see some clear skies coming in some days. Um, for the state highs of the day, we are seeing 57 and 58 around Salt Lake and Provo, 72 in St. George, and 40 up in Vernal. For the lows of the day, we are looking at 35 in Salt Lake City, 33 in Provo, 51 warm degrees in St. George. For our five-day southern forecast, we are seeing rain tomorrow with a degree of 68 degrees and low 48. And Thursday rain, however, the sky is going to clear up and we'll see some um, sunshine and nice clouds outside. For our northern part, we are seeing rain tomorrow or clouds tomorrow with a lot of rain in it. And so we're seeing rain on Thursday and Friday, but Saturday will be sunny and then we're seeing more rain on Sunday. We will be right back. I don't remember how it started. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? <laughs> How does a tissue dance? Put a little boogie on it. <laughs> hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. The BYU women's basketball team earned a 7 seed and will take on Auburn in the first round of the NCAA tournament. After beating Gonzaga to win the WCC championship last week, the Cougars found out where they will be playing in this year's tournament yesterday afternoon. Jeff Judkins' team will travel to Stanford, California as a number 7 seed to take on the number 10 seeded Auburn Tigers. If the Cougars win, they would play the winner of the number 2 seed Stanford and the number 15 seed UC Irvine. Seventh is tied for the highest seed the Lady Cougars have ever had in the NCAA tournament, matching their position in the 2016 tournament. Saturday's game is set for 1.30 p.m. As the women's basketball team heads to the NCAA tournament, another Cougar sport is just getting started. The men's track team is beginning their outdoor season this month and placed fifth in the national preseason rankings, marking the first time in school history the team is placed in the top five in the preseason rankings. The Cougars will continue their outdoor season this weekend at the Aztec Invitational in San Diego, California. Angels outfielder Mike Trout is on the verge of signing the highest paying contract in professional sports history. Multiple reports have stated that Trout and the Angels are nearing a 12-year, $430 million deal that would make him the richest man in baseball. 
The 27-year-old has won the AL MVP twice and come in second place four times in his career. The Jazz started their East Coast road trip the right way with a 116-95 win over Washington. Ricky inside, slices, oh, beautiful yeah. pass, and up and down goes Gobert. Rudy Gobert finished with 14 points and 14 boards, while Donovan Mitchell scored a team-high 19 points as the Jazz coasted to a 21-point victory. Five players ended up scoring in double digits for the Jazz, who dished out 35 assists as a team. The win puts the Jazz at 41-29 and 29 on the season, only three games back of the third-place Rockets. Utah will continue their road trip tomorrow night against the Knicks. Rudy Gay driving all the way to the rim. Steph from three-quarter court, and he banked it in! He banked it in, he got it off in time! Steph Curry hit the longest shot of the NBA season so far at the end of the first quarter in the Warriors game against the Spurs last night. Curry would finish with 25 points to lead the Warriors, but it wasn't enough as the Spurs ended up on top, 111-105. to Luka beats Dirk, top of the key again. Over Williams, jumper's gone! The wait is over to pass Wilt! Mavericks legend Dirk Nowitzki made history last night, passing Wilt Chamberlain for sixth all-time on the all-time scoring list. Dirk scored eight points in 12 minutes in the Mavericks' loss to the Pelicans last night, giving him a career total of 31,424 points in his 21 NBA seasons. We'll be right back. The truth is I'm impressed. I haven't been asked such intelligent questions in a long time. Nice. These are cool. Did you, um, what did you? What? Make sure they don't get too close. Thanks for joining us today at Newsline. Have a great day. What a good day to have. Oh, really? Day.